Hi, Alimo. This is um, uh, this is our little Hi. video to help promote uh, the anthology of Ethiopian Amharic poetry, songs we learned from trees uh, that we've been asked to do by uh, Karkinet. Um, so the book uh, called Songs We Learn From Trees uh, has just come out uh, in May. And, um, you know, we were planning uh, a big UK tour, weren't we, Alimo? That's um, right. But, yeah. uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen for the time being, but it will happen eventually. Um, and uh, we, will, um, we will, you know, properly launch it physically. But in the meantime, we're doing a sort of virtual Tour. So this, this uh, conversation that we're going to have uh, between myself and Alimu is sort of like one of, is part of that virtual tour. So I thought we'd just start, Alimu, by introducing ourselves. So I'm Chris, Chris Beckett. Uh, and, and I'm Alimu. <laughs> I'm Alimu Tabeche. Right. So uh, we are the editors and translators of Songs We Learn From Trees which uh, is the first ever anthology of Ethiopian poetry uh, in English. So we're, we're very proud of it, aren't we, Alimu? Correct, that's right, yeah. We are so and happy. Let me just show you the book. There it is, with a gorgeous um, quartered cover. And up here you can see is um, a wonderful painting by an Ethiopian painter uh, who lives in California, in fact called Wasane Kostrov, and uh, he allowed us to, to use uh, his painting for this because it's got Amharic writing, um, the, what they call fidel, which is the, uh, the Amharic uh, letters. So um, without further ado, uh, Alimu, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself and how, yeah, uh, I... how we came to start translating poetry together? Yeah, uh, I'm a poet, uh, a journalist, and uh, currently I'm working in the health sector. So you, Actually, you're working in a hospital in, in Cambridge, right? In Cambridge, uh, University of Cambridge Hospital. And uh, actually our meeting, our introduction to each other is poetic by itself. Two poets who share the same name are reason how we met. Uh, That's we, right. Yeah. We met together, meet, met. Actually, in February 2006, Chris was searching online, was searching online uh, information about Tsagaya uh, Gebramadin, Loret Tsagaya Gebramadin, hmm. an Ethiopian poet and playwright. So, on his search uh, uh, information about Tsagaya Gebramadin, he came to our website and read our website, drao.com, and read that a statement that Sagaya Gavramadin felt in the hands of the Ethiopian regime and disappeared, and his whereabouts were not known. So Chris was a bit um, uh, confused to say. Because it was a different. Sergei yeah. Gabramedin, right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. So just uh, uh, Chris uh, dropped an email message to my editorial yeah. uh, box yeah. asking me a clarification and, uh, yeah. if, and asking me if we, I can help him to get in touch with Sergei Gabramedin, Lorette Sergei Gabramedin. I replied to him explaining that there are two Sagaya Gabramedin, yeah. and both of them were are Ethiopian poets, great poets yeah. and yeah. writers. And one but of them is in our anthology, right? Yes. So uh, I promised him, I explained to him uh, about each of them, and yeah. I promised to him to come back to help him as much as possible to get in touch with Sagaya Gabramedin. Yeah. Actually, I had access to his uh, detail, contact details. Yes. But unfortunately, within a week time, Loris Egeagavramadin, the one Chris was looking for. The one I was looking uh, for had died, right? <laughs> yeah, he passed away. I, came I remember past... sending him a letter and he couldn't reply and I was wondering why. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he was in dialysis. He was uh, really yeah. living in exile in New York. In New York, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get on to 
let's go, let's move from that to, uh, you know, so that was our initial point of contact, wasn't it? That's how we met each other. But That's then we right. started uh, translating we, poetry. We, we found started. out that we were that we were both interested in poetry and there wasn't much, yeah. And uh, published in MPT, then uh, we finally, uh, uh, and different online magazines. Yes. And finally, we uh, also uh, established, started a new publishing company called Tamrat Books. Yes. Uh, Tamrat Book is uh, aimed to uh, bring, uh, to translate and present Ethiopian uh, uh, literature workers yes. literature, yeah. to the English readers. Yeah, and we've published, I've got them here, our first two. So that's, that's uh, right, a yeah. poet called Hamatuma, a little pamphlet, uh -huh. and that is actually Ala um, which right, yeah. So both small books, um, yeah. and, and we were working on that, and then all of a sudden, um, yeah, yeah, I had in thinking. mind for quite a long time that it would be nice to do an anthology of Ethiopian poetry, but I didn't hope, I didn't had, a, had no idea that somebody would be interested until Michael Schmidt, uh, in fact, yeah, asked me. Uh, yeah, we, we sent some translation to PN That's Review. That's right, to PN Review, yeah. yeah. And then Michael asked us if we could do anthology. Yeah, so that was really exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, so we happily uh, accept his uh, request. Yeah, indeed. Talk. Yeah. But also the, you know, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about the sort of structure of the book because I remember asking Michael, well, okay, an anthology of Ethiopian poetry, but what sort of anthology? What, you know, do you want just, uh, let's say, 10 contemporary poets or do you want uh, bigger than that and he said he wanted uh, you know a very comprehensive uh, anthology a sort of overview um, so he wanted folk poetry he wanted mm -hmm. um, 20th century poetry and he wanted contemporary poetry so that's what we've done that's why the anthology yeah. is you know almost 300 pages um, yeah. and, the, and it was it was really challenging uh, to find uh, you know, for the first section to find um, a lot of interesting folk poems uh, because, uh, so we then had to rely on, um, you know, on academic research to find, um, you know, for example, Fakade Azizé's book of famine poetry, where he'd gone yeah. into the countryside. Uh, you found um, uh, the prophecies of uh, Sheikh, uh, Hussein Jibril, yeah. Sheikh Hassan Jibril, yes. Um, so Hussein Jibril. Where, where did you find those, Alimo? Actually, these poems, uh, I collect them. Uh, I use them when I did my undergraduate study in Ethiopian language and literature. Right. I did it, uh, I did a, just a few work for my essay. Yeah. So I got them. Right. Yeah. But then, then the 20th century poets, I think you want to talk about, you know, we, we, we knew very easily, very quickly uh, who the great poets of the 20th century were and who we wanted to include, right? And one of them that you really wanted to include was Gemoral. That's right, yeah. So uh, talk to us a bit about Gemoral. Oh, Gemoral, yeah. Uh, of the... Uh, Diaspora Ethiopian poets included in this book are uh, the great uh, uh, poet, short story writer, and human rights campaigner Haram Amatuma, and also uh, Gamorau. In yeah. fact, I went to Sweden to meet and talk to uh, him uh, before he died in 2014. Mm -hmm. I'm really lucky and to meet and be hosted by this great giant of Ethiopian literature. Yeah. Uh, he is simply the great Shakespeare of Ethiopian poetry, I, I can say. He is a great connector of the Ethiopian uh, traditional church writing to modern Ethiopian writing. Also, mm -hmm. a great connector of uh, Chinese and Far East philosophy and stories to the Ethiopian writing. 
-hmm. Actually, we uh, when I once I met him before he died when he was in Sweden, we agreed to have a more detailed conversation and maybe a video recorded interview. He also gave me copies of his works and list of his works. This includes his works in Giz, Amharic, English, Chinese language, and contains more than 100 works. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, he passed away before we do this, uh, before mm -hmm. we did this. And, uh, but it was always, it was always my dream and my wish to, uh, to translate his famous long poem, Barakat Amargam, or Gift of a Curse. And yeah. I'm really, I'm really uh, <laughs> happy uh, to do this with Chris. Yeah, and we had a lot of fun, have, didn't we? Because it's it's such a mad poem. <laughs> it's a really a mad poem, but it's a, a central message is really universal. Yes. Uh, so we include this uh, part. We included very, basically extracts from it, didn't we? Because it's very, very long. Yeah, we, ex we tell, tell people listening about what happened when he read it in the university uh, oh, before, yeah. he, before he went into exile. Yeah, this is happened during the time of Emperor Haile Selassie. Uh, the university was called uh, Iceland of uh, Democracy because students were uh, allowed to have their own um, journal, yeah. struggle or toggle. And they were also allowed to organize a poetry reading event every year yeah. in the university. And uh, there was, um, by that, that year, in that year, at that event, at that particular event, Gamora uh, was presenting, reading his event, this poem. Uh, he cursed all great innovators of science and technology. So Haile Selassie was upset. Emperor Haile Selassie was attending uh, this event on a yearly basis. That's amazing, but, you know, that the, that the emperor would be attending this student poetry event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, Haile Selassie was upset and he left. He just left. He stormed uh, out. That's what you told me, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that... Can we, can we move then from, from the 20th century, from these great, yeah, uh, the 10 great? Thing, but yeah. one thing, uh, just let me uh, say, uh, read out a quotation from Gomorrah. Okay. He said the following about the motive of his writing. He says, the whole motive of my writing is based on trying to express their Ethiopia and, and her people agony in a literary form. Therefore, the Amari poem below is embodied with an actual text that expresses the soul of my motive to cry aloud the bitter conditions of their miserable life and, uh, and express their deepest agony on their behalf. So here is a, a poem which we include, actually we included in this uh, book. It is titled, I'm going to read it in Amari. And uh, hopefully, Chris, you, can you read it in English? Yeah, I'm just it's, a bit worried about time. So, so but anyway, let, let's, let's do it, yeah. Yeah, and what that has. Can it's an to look at me to I in it? You will ask me to look at me to I in it. Tam ne tun minyo tun so migel tzabbat. Taf no kanero ye so lij milasu. Nkwan si gaun na tagaji na ta nafsu. Ye min na garbat lu so tun si kayun. And what kalele has been yogan? ቀላጤ <laughs> For the voiceless people. Of all freedoms, speech is the first, and it is the tongue which allows us to voice our desires and our desiring. If the tongue is tied down and cannot tell what we feel, not only our flesh is tied, but our soul. 
And if our fellow man is tongue-tied, we must speak for him too. If we find ourselves in a free country, what is the use of freedom? If we do not speak for the speechless, is it a crime to say I am their fellow man? For all those whose voice is silent, who blames a blistering heat wave for their burnt tongues, their raging hungers, and who cannot cry help for themselves, cry help. So shall we move now from Gemoral, from the great Gemoral, and from the other great poets of the 20th century to, to, the, uh, to contemporary poetry? And yeah. um, I remember that when, we, when Michael asked us uh, to, to, to do this, um, we already knew quite a few poets, um, but I asked you, I was going to Addis, I thought, well, I've got to go to Addis and find, uh, you know, find out who, you know, who are the important poets uh, in mm-hmm. Ethiopia right now, and, uh, and let's, you know, gather their books and start translating them. Yeah. Um, and so I asked you, uh, so how do I find out who the great poets are now? And you said, well, go to, to see somebody in the university. That's Addis. right, yeah. Um, I just, I, yeah, as I imposed you to advise you to visit my department when I attended uh, my undergraduate study. That yeah. is the Ethiopian Language and Literature Department of Addis Ababa University. Yes. Yeah. And, and you, you actually s- suggested to me to meet a specific professor who uh, is still working there and I think was your teacher when you were at Addis University. Uh, actually, he was, my, yeah, he was my classmate. Uh, oh, he was your no, classmate? Okay. Yeah, and my friend, actually, uh, Muhammad Ali. When, yeah. yeah, Muhammad Ali. When, when I went there, uh, I remember I asked for him, but he wasn't there. I don't know where he was. Anyway, I was uh, recommend. I explained what I wanted and what I was looking for, and I was recommended to meet um, somebody called Wandosan Adani, uh, who right, yeah. uh, turned out to be an absolute godsend for us um, yeah. because uh, I met him for a coffee in uh, yeah. in Addis, and he gave me. He just wrote in my in my notebook. He just yeah. wrote this list of <laughs> the thirteen poets absolutely had to be in this anthology. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it, it only included uh, two women poets, but anyway, I thought, well, we can find more women, women poets to redress the balance a bit later on. Yeah. Anyway, so what I, what I did, hang on, what's happened here? I've lost you. Um, so what I did was I went with my friend uh, Yemisraj. Yeah. You don't know Alimu, actually. Uh, anyway, she's a beautiful uh, young Ethiopian lady and very very lovely. She's the wife of a friend of mine and the, the sister of another friend of mine. And, and she said, well, listen, let's go to the Piazza. So we went to the Piazza district of Addis, where there are lots of bookstalls. Uh, and, oh, yeah, uh, and yeah. We, we, you know, we bought as many, uh, you know, books by these poets that Wanderson had recommended. And then I brought them back to London. And, um, with these books, as well as some books which you had, we then yeah. went, started translating. And I just wanted to tell people how that process worked exactly. You know, basically, either the poet would choose or would recommend which, poem, uh, which poems we should translate, or generally speaking, you chose them, right? I think so. I think- uh, Well, the, the thing is that my Amharic, it's, I can read and write Amharic, but I can't understand yeah. it like a native. And therefore, to translate a poem takes me quite a long time to translate. And I just get to a literal, a literal meaning. And then even when I've got the literal meaning, I'm not absolutely certain that I've understood it all and understood the nuances. Yeah. And so basically, um, I, 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 just, I thought, and you thought as well, that it would be a good idea for you, you know, we choose the poems together. You say, well, listen, I think this might be good. What's it about? It's about this, this, this you know. So yeah. we would overview a poem and then get stuck into, into actually translating it. Uh, and then once we've yeah. got some sort of literal, then putting it into, uh, in to trying to make it into an English poem, uh, yeah. which is, you know, reflecting what the original is. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and one I of the poems, we... you know, some, some of the poems were chosen by the poets. And I wanted to mention one, which is one of my favorite poems in the book, uh, by Bedilu Wakjira, 
um, mm -hmm. called uh, Truth My Child, Onut Malet No Yone Lynch. Yeah, that's and, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was actually originally translated by an Ethiopian lady, Hiwata Dessa, uh, but then, uh, you know, then worked on um, back into the, uh, back using the Ethiopian original, the Amharic original, and then um, we worked on it together, if I remember. I did a lot of work, then took it to you, and yeah. then we went back and forth with that poem. And then yeah. uh, I asked Michael Schmidt, Garganet, if he might look at it for PN Review. And uh, he said, yeah, send it to me. And he, he absolutely loved it. Um, so that was one of the poems which I think maybe um, persuaded him that he should ask us to do, <laughs> to do the mm. anthology. Um, so, uh, who do we talk about um, next? I, 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 what I wanted to, um, you know, we could talk about many of the poets in the book. Yeah, we also uh, included two great Ethiopian uh, women poets. Uh, yeah. We may say, Alam Zai Wadaju and Kabadish uh, uh, Taklaab. Yeah. Uh, actually, Kabadish uh, Taklaab. The uh, her works included in this book are uh, the one which one of my favorite one. Mm. She this poem was written where, while she was in prison in Somalia. In Somalia, yeah, when she yeah, was trying to. And, uh, yeah, how if she was lonely. It reflects it's a reflection how how she fe felt at yeah. the time and. Uh, yeah, it's really also, moving poem, isn't it? Yeah, it's very moving poem. And we also uh, include uh, Lemon Sisse. Ah, now that's interesting. That yeah. is interesting because I met Lem, I'd met him before, but I met him at the Ethiopian Literary Festival, the first Ethiopian Literary Festival, um, which you and uh, the Ethiopian community in Britain organized yeah. in, in last year, wasn't it? February last year. That's right, yeah. yeah. And uh, we talked about this upcoming anthology and uh, got ch chatting to Lem um, Sise later on, and he said, well, I'm Ethiopian, I should be in this anthology. And, and we both, I remember, we both said, oh my God, that's wonderful. Yeah, we'd love to have yeah. you in. And in fact, uh, then uh, we're recording, um, making a little recording of Lem next Monday, of him uh, reading one of his poems uh, from the book. So that will be that's part great. of the yeah. virtual tour as well. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, the other bit, one of my other big excitements was actually looking for a few more women poets for the book and finding uh, these two young poets in Addis, um, uh, Miret Kabbada and Israq uh, Tarrafa, together started a, um, you know, a monthly poetry and jazz um, uh, you know, event in, in Addis called um, Tobia Poetic Jazz. And, and they're both terrific uh, writers, absolutely fearless. That's right. Um, and and I really, I'm really, really glad that we've got, uh, we've got them in, in the anthology. Um, so shall we talk a little bit about then, um, you know, about how to order the book and, and the tour that we're going to, we're going to yeah, do? Yeah, uh, we had organized a big lunch tour of London, Cambridge, Oxford, Leeds, and Manchester. But uh, because of this uh, virus outbreak, we had to be, uh, that had to be postponed. So this yeah, is- Yeah, it will happen uh, eventually, won't it? Definitely, we are hoping, uh, we are uh, hoping to do it uh, as soon as uh, this thing is over, this uh, virus outbreak yeah. is over. And, uh, but so this is part of a virtual tour. Uh, six or seven videos of poets reading a poem in Amharic and English uh, will be posted on Karkanet Plus and uh, other sites. I think uh, we are uh, also uh, hoping to launch uh, uh, Addis Lunch, to have Addis Lunch maybe in October. Yeah, I mean, uh, your friend uh, who works in the Ministry of Culture is yeah. very interested in helping us having uh, a big launch in Addis uh, in, uh, in uh, October, if it's possible. I, and yeah. even if it doesn't happen in October, I think it will happen later on um, because 
as as we said at the beginning, this is the first ever um, you know introduction of Ethiopian poets and poetry to the to the wider world. Um, exactly. So we're very excited about that, and I think uh, the Ministry of Culture in uh, in Ethiopia is excited about it as well, which is really wonderful, yeah. and, and the British Council as well, of course. So yeah. uh, we're very hopeful. So uh, uh, this should... is, uh, I think, this is the beginning of our new adventure. We are hoping. Yes, it is. <laughs> we are hoping to translate and, and I, bring. And what we want to say, Alamo, isn't it, that we hope that anybody listening to this video and looking at a, you know, hearing us and looking at us, uh, rabbiting on about, uh, you know, so enthusiastically about this book, will feel, you know, some of our enthusiasm and want to buy it. Um, so please do go on the Carcanet website. Um, and uh, there is a um, there is a discount code <laughs> that uh, is if Ethiopia you want to buy it. Ethiopia in, in, in uppercase uh, Ethiopia 25 uh, and you'll get a 25% discount um, I think that is only until the end of this month so please get uh, please get buying if, if you feel uh, interested the book is um, yeah, the book is full of, uh, of different things, and we hope you will enjoy it, don't we? I hope so, yeah. Please, please, please buy the book. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.